Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with the Adam So Fun, and today I am sitting in a hotel room in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Um, the lighting is horrible, and I'm stuck recording on my other computer because I forgot my charge cord for my Mac. So, well, this is what it is. Um, hopefully I can actually get this edited. I've never edited a video on my PC. I always do it on my Mac. So I know how that program works and I'm not really sure how this works. So we'll see. I'll just try not to make any mistakes so I don't have to edit anything. But today we are going to be talking about um, this mug rug, or not mug rug. This is a casserole carrier. Let me see, it folds up. I'll fold it all the way up. It's not done because I didn't get a chance to finish it. Um, in the last few, uh, in the last four weeks, I've been in five or four states. I've really been in one, two, three, four, I guess four states. Um, so this is my probably not poisoned casserole carrier. Um, I went in, I digitized these words. I have it stitch it out in ProStitcher. Um, everything, this was all done in ProStitcher. I didn't take, do anything on my domestic machine yet. I do have to go back to my domestic machine to make little loops so I can put um, uh, wooden, like a wooden, not a wooden dowel, but a wooden spoon through here and have hold or hand holds. Um, but so I did that. I did digitize the lettering. I digitized the skull and crossbones. Um, I went in and used catalog to find some designs that I had in my arsenal. So this is one of the designs I used. And then this is the other design I used. Going with the Halloween witchy theme. I don't know. I thought it would be cool. Um, I, I love it. I don't have a casserole dish. I just realized we got rid of all of them when we moved from Cleveland to California. But whatever, I still have a casserole carrier. I'm like, oh, I'll just gift it to somebody. Um, but I have to finish it. Who knows when I'll have time to do that. I did, like, you'll see at some part, you'll see that it's still open because I haven't even, like, top stitched. But... Um, today, so we're going to do a few, a series of videos showing how I did this, showing the process. So today we're going to talk about, um, finding a font you like, maybe some fonts that work great, um, as, uh, fonts that you would digitize, things that might be easier to use than the ones I did. I had to spend a lot of time, um, closing gaps and stuff. So today I think we'll talk about finding fonts, downloading them into your, uh, onto your computer. Every computer is going to be a little bit different. So this is how I do it on my Dell XPS 13. If yours is different and you have to do it a different way, sorry, I don't know computers. I know what I have and I know that I just clicked the button. Um, so hopefully it works for everybody. Um, and then I'll show you how to open them up and do your spelling, whatever. And then maybe next week we'll talk about lining them up and getting them to stitch and then um, going in and editing them so that they stitch in one pass. Because I went back in and edited this to all the stitch. Or maybe, I don't know, we'll see how long the video starts to get and then I'll fix it from there. Um, and then we'll talk about how to auto-digitize. So I auto-digitized this skull. So um, that will be a video on how I did that. Um, I don't need to show you a video on how catalog works. There's already one, why I love catalog, that's what it's called. And then um, the last video is stitching this out and how I stitched it out and everything. Um, a few things, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. We are so close to 10,000, and I think I'm going to give away a sewing machine. That, that's crazy, yeah? Maybe? Ooh, I don't know. Um, but uh, it'll probably be right after Houston, because I'm not home until mid-November, so we'll probably wait to do the giveaway then. But I am really hoping to hit 10,000 before November. Let me tell you, let me see where we're at. Oh my gosh, I need 20 six people. No, I don't. It just went up three. I need 22 people, seven, eight, nine, 23 people to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon over on Adam So Fun on YouTube, and I will hit 10,000 subscribers. You guys, you amaze me. You amaze me every day. Um, sometimes I have a bad day. Today's not, has not been a great day. Got some bad news, but um, you know what? We're going to make, we're going to make the best of it. We've been setting up. I'm here in Elkhorn. We set up 12 machines, God, 14 machines today. Um, I'm wearing my Handy Quilter Educator shirt because um, I was doing heavy lifting. 
Uh, I'll post some pictures on my Facebook page so you can see those. If you haven't, make sure you follow me on uh, Facebook or on social media. It's Adam So Fun on Facebook and Instagram with an S E W. So go follow me there. Again, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to switch the camera around and we're going to jump into this video talking about these fonts. So we'll see you back here in a second. Bye. All right, here we are. I'm on my computer and we are going to pick out a font. I knew I want something scary. I want something weird. So let me go to my, um, here we are. Um, oh, look, there's Quiltable, my favorite place to shop for all things Pro Stitcher designs. But we're going to hit this plus and I'm going to Google, just Google.com Google and I'm going to look up fonts. And somebody, there's my fonts. There's a lot of different places places to shop or uh, look. I like DeFont. Somebody in class actually told me this. I can't remember. I started giggling. I'm like DeFont. And then I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to use it. So there's like all of these are different, different um, up here. Uh, what's the word? Categories, I guess. So like if I want something maybe sci-fi look, there's, oh, that would make a good one. Oh, that would be a good one. Game of squids, like squid game. So, um, all of these, you can look and it will say, you know, if you could, how you can use it. So make sure you're not breaking any copyrights or anything like that. Um, you do want to be nice and you don't want to break any laws. So um, I usually find something that's like for personal use. I'm not going to sell that, uh, that um, casserole dish. So I think, what did I search? Halloween? Just gonna type Halloween up in the search box. Mm -hmm. And look through. Um, here, let's see. And I wanted something that looked kind of runny, like toxic. I don't even know where I got it. I got my design on here, but I don't remember what I searched. Spooky, maybe? Oh, yeah. Save, save searches. Spooky. Oh, so this is one. This is the one I used for, um, for the probably not. I'm not going to download it again. I'm going to download something I didn't get. Oh, this is nice. This is a good one. I'm going to take this one. So let's say that I wanted all of my stuff to be this slime spooky. I'm going to look over here. It's going to say for personal use only. That's great. Um, you can click on it, and I believe that it will show you how all the letters look. And um, this is a good one. I like how these look. So I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to say download. It's going to download my spooky zip file. I'm going to hit open. And then um, I have my spooky font, spooky online, read me. Um, sometimes I come over to this read me and see what it says. Uh, let's see. By installing this font, you agree to my terms of use. This is for personal use only. If you want to buy it, you can. Great. Um, now I'm going to click on my spooky font name. It has a bunch of different uh, sentences and shows how the fonts look at different sizes. And then up here it says print and install. So I'm just going to click install. It's going to say installing and then it's just going to go off. And you're going to feel like, wait, it didn't do anything. But we're going to go see. Um, Let's see, and this is Slime Spooky. I have to remember what the name is. So there we are. Um, and usually I look for a true type font. Does this tell you? I can't remember how you can find out if it's true type or not. And I don't even know what that means, but that's what I feel like I needed. Um, so I'm gonna click on that to get that to disappear. So I have, I've downloaded my font. I've clicked, I've installed it. So, all right, so now I'm gonna go open my All right, so now I need to go open my Pro Stitcher Designer, and I'm going to open that by Pro Stitcher Studio because Pro Stitcher Designer is part of Pro Stitcher Studio. 
Here it is. So you really can find fonts for anything out there. You just have to search. Some will work better than others. I'm going to go to create new design. It didn't tell me there's a new update, so I can just continue. And now I'm on my new window and we're just going to start working. Um, let me see. I'm going to hit my view and I'm going to turn my grid on for this so I can kind of see some stuff going on. But um, I want to add text. So I'm going to my uh, tools tab and there's notes and there's text. Um, notes will add a box and add typing. I can say um, this font is called slime spooky apply. And now this is just a note on this file. It's nothing else. There's just a note on this file that says um, this font is called slime spooky. You can't stitch this out. Can you? Let me see. Enter. Select it. Select this. Stitches. Nope. Yeah, so you can't change it to artwork or anything, but it does show that something's there, so that's going to be annoying. I'm going to make it disappear. Yeah, I don't know if I like that, but you can put notes on there. So I'm going back to my tools. I'm going to hit text. So and I'm going to click my text box, and it's still using the spooky because that's the last thing I, I picked. So if I click on the sidebar, so remember, we're going to use file ribbon sidebar, just like Pro Stitcher. I'm going to come over, I'm going to click sidebar, and I'm going to look for my slime spooky. And there it is. So I have my, um, what was the other one? There's my spooky, and I can't remember what the other one was called. I should have remembered because I know somebody's going to ask, what font did you use? And I'll be like, I have no clue. Um, oh, it's called Halloween Morning. How did I find that? I don't even know. But that's my, that's my, uh, the one I used. But let's go back to Slime Spooky. Oh, we'll come back to that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, K, L, M, N, O, Slime Spooky, there we are. Okay, so now there's my font. You can see it's changed over here. And um, maybe I wanna do the whole thing, probably not poisoned. And I'm gonna type over here in my, in my box. So um, this did say note, I'm gonna click, and now I'm gonna type probably enter not, I like the lowercase, poisoned. P -O -I -S -O -N -E -D. So once it's over here, you can see that this text box is not changing. I'm going to stitch, I'm going to type all this out. I want to change the height. Let's say I want my, um, my uh, words to be three inches tall. So that would be three, six, nine. So I'm going to make this nine, 9.5 because there's still going to be a break between them. So they're going to be a little smaller than, um, three, and we can change our alignment. I want them center aligned, um, left to right, good. And then once I hit apply, watch this text. There we are, there we have it. Probably not poisoned. Now this is huge. The next thing I always look is I'm gonna tap on this box. This is 62 inches wide and 30 inches high. Oh, was that doing three? Three inches per Oh no, nine inches per letter. Is that right? Whatever, you know what we can do? Three, six, nine, I want this nine inches high. Nine, change it to nine. Make sure maintain aspect, aspect ratio is selected, apply. There we are. I can hit space bar, or I can click and hit space bar, it will zoom in. So now I'm probably not poisoned. We're not quite done yet because this is still an artwork and I need to apply um, lines to it or stitches to it. We just want to stitch the outline. I want the outline around the letter and I want the outline around the, um, the inner parts if there are. So I have a P O B A B O O O D. All of those have its center parts. So if I have this, you can see down here on the, um, sequence view that it's still text. I'm going to click on the star and it's still text. So I'm going to 
hit my select tool. There we go. And you see that I have options to pick things now. So I can change this to a running stitch. I can change it to a motif. I can change it to an artwork. So I'm going to click artwork. And now I'm going to get that um, the outline. You could also pick a motif and you can change it to zigzaggy stitches and you have all of these different motifs to use. Maybe you want pebbles. Oh, that would look, oh, that would actually look kind of cool. Um, what else? Some of these will work better than others. So you can try it out because some of these are stitching really small. Oh, you can have an art or hearts. Those don't look good. Although it looks like little razor blades in the back. Kind of, that might work. So yeah, you should have an, a lot of options when you play with your motifs. Again, some things are going to stitch better than others. And look at all those jumps. Oh my gosh, we don't want those. So let's see. I'm going to go back to artwork because that's how I want it. Um, and now I, I can pick single letters if I want. I can select and pick part of, part of words. At this point, I like to split this up. So I want to work with probably, I want to work with not, and poison separately. I want everything to be their own little piece. So if I select my whole probably, I have my color bar down here, and I'm just going to right click. I I've, I've, haven't changed any of my settings, so to change the color, you, sel you select the word, right click on the color, and now I can change these colors to, um, to split them up a little bit better. This one actually should be the green one since I stitched it out green. Let's change this one to orange. Too bad I don't have a dark purple. But um, now if I come back over here, because we're in my effects view, you have your design view, your navigator window, your purchases. I want to go to my sequence view. And if I zoom this up and let's see. Usually, oh, we can group these two. Let's group them. Right click. I'm going to say group and right click group and right click group. And now I have each of these words grouped up. So here's probably not poisoned. So now let's go work with one at a time. So I'm gonna hit my Z or I'll just click it here. I could also hit Z and let's zoom in on probably. So I wanna stitch this, but I do not want to stitch it with jumps. I don't want those words to be separated. So I'm going to come down. Um, let's see, I'm going to right click on my, this is my ruler bar. I'm right clicking, I'm going to hit snap to grid because I want to keep everything in line and I'm going to come pop this up and snap it into an intersection. So things are nice in line. So they're all in line on the seven. Um, so now if I pick, click the R, oh, they're grouped. So I have to ungroup them, right click, group. So if I select the R, I can move that R around. If I hold shift, it locks it into place either on the up and down, because see where my mouse is, but the R is staying right um, vertical. So this is going to be your vertical. I can come up here and keep it horizontal. So if I let go of shift, I can bring it over here with my finger or with where my hand is, but if I hold shift and move it, it pops back up there. So it keeps everything nice and in line. I want to move the R over so they just, I'm going to zoom in really close, so they just overlap a little bit. And this is all dependent on what you're looking for um, with your uh, with your stitch out, like how much of the R you want to see. So now they're overlapped a little bit. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna uh, hold or grab the O, hold shift, drag it over a little bit. So this is this is sometimes where the snap doesn't work to our advantage. So I am going to right click, turn off snap to grid, because I wanna be able to move it anywhere, especially since I'm just trying to overlap a little bit. I'm gonna grab the B and I will come through and get a letter, drag it over. 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 
and I just need it to overlap a tiny bit. I might move this B over. We'll see if that's enough. Let me zoom in. They are overlapped. I think that might work. So now, let me zoom back in. I hit space bar, so now I'm going to zoom back into probably. So now I want to, I'm going to turn my grid off. I want to connect these all so they stitch in one pass. This is so easy, you guys. I'm going to select the P, hold control, select the R. I'm going to come up to my modify, and we have trim, weld, and intersect. So trim is like a cookie cutter. It's going to cut part of it out. Weld, you can see, and it shows you, the icons up here show you what they do. So this is a square, this is the other square, and it trims out anything from the design that is behind, so farther back in the sequence. Weld will weld them together, and intersect will cut out anything where they intersect. So I have my P and my R selected, and I'm going to hit weld. And you'll see that now they're one piece. See how that disappeared? So now I'm going to control. I'll select the O. So watch right here where the R and the O are. I'll even zoom in. Let me move my camera. There you go. So watch this right here. Three, two, one. Bam. It's like magic. Do the same thing with B. Weld. And I just, I'm control, uh oh, control and clicking to select my next. Bam. Control and click. This will be just a little tiny cutout. Bam. Look at that little gap. But now, uh oh, I deselected it. What am I going to do? I'm just going to hold control and select the rest of the word. Weld. Hold the control, select the word. Weld. And now I have probably all stitching out in one line. If I select it and I preview and I add stitches, there's jumps because I have the center, I have the center here, I have the center here, I have the center over here, and I have the center over here. But that outside edge is all one piece. And if you look, why is it end over here? That's weird, because it starts there. Let's watch this stitch. It might stitch out weird. Jump, 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 jump. There's my, oh, there's a little tiny um, cutout right there. I'm gonna have to go clear that. I always watch the stitch outs because you might notice something like that. So there's just a little tiny piece that the weld left. It must have overlapped twice. So we can cut that one piece out and that's it. And so you can see how the second half is gonna stitch all of that um, out in one piece. Now you're probably asking, well, why didn't you just pick all the letters, zoom out, and um, have it stitch them all, uh, uh, or have it weld everything together at once? I find that that takes so much brain power that um, the the computer can't always process it. So um, let's see. I'm going to zoom into knot, and the first thing I want to show you is I'm going to pick knot. We're going to add stitches. I'm going to do my stitch out again. You can see that it starts with the orange. So I'm just going to go there and we'll hit start. And you'll see these are all going to be jumps. So it's going to do the N and then jump. O, there's two jumps. T, there's another jump. So this is why I do this step. I don't want those jumps. I don't want them in there. So I'm going to select my knot. We combine them or we group them so I can right click, ungroup. I will select the N and the O, or I can do the O and the T, or actually I need to move them first. So they're just overlapping. The other thing you can do that I do sometimes, because this is kind of a straight line on both of these. So if I take this O and I tilt it a little bit by holding this little circle, now I can get that overlap really easy and the T is going to be a breeze. So there we are. So now N and O, modify weld. Oh, I can't hit weld. Do you know why? I do. It's because these are stitches. We need to be in artwork. So I'm going to select everything, right click, convert to artwork. And see, now I can select them. And so I'm going to do, and actually, let's see, I'm going to pick all three. This probably can do it pretty easy. Boom, bam, bam, done. Um, this one did it pretty easy because the uh, there's not a lot of letters. I don't want to do like poisoned 
and then have to wait for my computer to um, think because sometimes it takes like 15 minutes. So now I'm going to do the same thing with poisoned. First, I have to select and ungroup it. The next, I have to move things over. And I think I might, um, the eye can go over a little bit more. You have to be careful though, because if you move one, especially if it's farther back in the line, you have to start moving a lot. Um, but remember, you are, oh, I moved that on accident. You are the master of your quilt. So you get to pick and choose how you want to do this. This is another one. It's kind of weird. So I'm going to tilt that E a little bit so that I can easily get that um, cropped out. B. And now I can pick, pick, oops, pick, pick, weld, pick, weld, pick, weld, pick, weld, pick, Weld, pick, weld, pick, weld. There we are. And now I have probably not poisoned. I can assign stitches. I can see the stitch out. Let me go fast. I still would have to cut out that little piece just because that would drive me crazy. That's just enough for it to go stitch, 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 stitch. And that's how fast, that's how I did this. It's not hard. It's just, you have to know the buttons to push. Oh my gosh. Um, so let's talk about some fonts that work really good. Um, things that don't have an inner part. So, um, I think I just saw there's some letterings on Quiltable that uh, they have. They're already designs, but they're just letters and numbers. Um, but they all had this piece already done. So like it stitched in, did the center and stitched back out because we're going to have to add that. But that's going to be next video. Um, what other? There's another one we used at Pro Stitcher or at Handy Quilter Academy. Don't tell anyone I shared this. It starts with a B. Let's see. Bajas, Bajas 93, B-A-U-H-A-U-S 93. See how these letters are done where they're all, um, they all have a line into the center. So if I do, probably not poison. And we'll just make this five, I don't know be big um, but see how all of the centers have a spot that um or except for the o of course the o is going to be not have it and i'm going to show you that and it has all those but like the a and everything so if i were to select this go to my effects do my lines break it apart or ungroup and i start and i just move these over and i'll just do this one really quick because all of these stitch in and out, I have a lot less work to do than I'm going to going to have with the design that I just used. Uh, let's see, modify, weld. And this time I'm working backwards. It doesn't matter. You can go backwards, you can do forwards, you can do half of it and then the other half. But with this, and let's preview stitches, stitch out, and go. We'll start here with the blue. We'll go here with the blue. Um, it's going to do just this one jump. So that O is the only piece that I would have to go back in and trim. So this is a very nice uh, font for your lettering. So um, this is probably not poisoned. Um, we just downloaded a new font. This one is called Slime Spooky. Um, I download it from DeFont. Make sure you're not breaking any copyright rules if it's for your 
personal use, just use it for your personal use or contact the uh, maker and they will let you use it and sell it if, I don't know, talk to them about it. But um, we brought it, we wrote our design or we wrote our words, edited those designs, checked it. Remember, when you do this, you have to save this as an HQV if you want to stitch it out. And I'm going to delete, or oh, I don't have to worry about it. Watch this. I can, I have all my design here. I can come to my home screen. And if you have designer on your tablet and you do this on your tablet, I can hit that sewing machine that send. It's going to open Pro Stitcher because I am on my computer. And there we are, probably not poisoned. And uh, I can't see my bottom house to refresh it. Oh, let's see, bottom house refresh. And now Pro Stitcher can stitch this out. Again, there's a lot of jumps. Oh, I forgot to delete that little piece that I kept saying I would delete. Um, but there you are. You can send it to Pro Stitcher and have it stitch out right then. So uh, we'll see you back here in a second. All right, everyone. So that was um, a really easy, quick tutorial on how to download a font, um, install it, and then use it in Pro Stitcher Designer. Um, I hope that was easy to follow and that um, you learned a little something. It really is not that hard. Um, if you'd like to add lettering to your quilts, there are some great tutorials on ProStitcher.com. Go and you can print out the tutorials at the bottom of the education page. But again, this is probably not poisoned. Um, I hope I don't poison anyone. I'm going to gift this to somebody who uh, might accidentally do it. I don't know. Um, but as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. And I'm super excited to get to 10,000 followers. That's just amazing to me in two years. Amazing. Um, don't forget to follow me on social media. Adam so fun with an SEW on Facebook and Instagram where you see everything that doesn't hit here. I'm so sorry that I didn't get a video out last week. I've just been traveling and teaching, um, but I'm looking forward to having some time home. And um, next week, we will talk about uh, how to take those jumps out. We'll go in and we'll edit those designs to take the jump out of the centerpiece and have it stitched. So if I come back over here and I look, if you look at poisoned, there's a little, I'm doing this backwards. There's a little line here from the center of the P. There's a little line here from the center of the O. There's a line over here between the O and the N and again in the D. So I went through, and not only that is I also, like up here, these were two jumps that I made look like they were part of the cursive lettering. So I went in and did a lot of editing in this. It took a few hours, because um, I'm just not, I, I can do it, but I can't do it great. But I mean, that's all, the, all you need to know is how to do it. You don't have to be able to do it fast. So um, that's what we'll talk about next week. And then the week after that, we'll auto digitize. Um, if I get a chance, I'm going to upload this onto the file sections of my So Fun, um, so Fun community Facebook group. Um, so if you want to stitch this out for Halloween, you can, because the videos will not be done before Halloween, just because it's already the sixth. And that's like three, four weeks. This is going to be four weeks of videos. But you can make something um, for Thanksgiving. It can say thankful, it can say family, it can say loved ones, made with love, made with sugar and spice. What else can Thanksgiving things? Made with turkey. It's turkey lurkey time. Like anything you want, you can do it because now you know how to get those fonts and download it. And you already have some great fonts in there. So make sure you check them out. Play. Pro Stitcher Designer is there to play. So, um, I don't know. I hope you had a good time. We'll see you in the next video. And what do I always say? At the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time and hopefully not poison anybody. We'll see you all in the next one, everybody. Bye.